On this week's Glanby Ireland Dairy Focus podcast, we'll get the latest on keeping housed cattle healthy and parasite free now that we've moved into the winter housing period. And we'll also talk about the importance of getting silage quality tested on farm this winter. But first, we'll raise awareness about the upcoming Animal Health Awareness Week kicking off the 23rd of November. My name is Michael Horan, I'm a vet with the Department of Agriculture and I just want to draw your attention to Animal Health and Awareness Week which is taking place from the 23rd to the 28th of November and some of the most important things we're doing is running webinars for farmers that week. On the Monday night we're doing a webinar on the connections between animal health and human health. Then on the Tuesday it's all about uh, sheep diseases, on the Wednesday it's about pig health and on Thursday we're talking about uh, cattle diseases and cattle health. So uh, watch out for our social media campaign and check out uh, gov.ie stroke agriculture for a full list of events. Uh, I hope you'll engage with us. Thanks very much for listening. Now we'll get an update from Animal Health Ireland on keeping housed cattle healthy over the winter period and parasite free. I'm Natasha Monia from Animal Health Ireland. The winter period is a time when lice and mite problems usually come to the surface. Winter housing creates an ideal environment for parasites to thrive. The close contact with animals and the long hair coats and the cosy, humid environment is ideal for the parasites. In the spring, when animals again are on pasture, the, U the sun, the UV rays and the shorter hair coats and the distance between the animals mean that it becomes less of a problem again. The signs of lice and mite infections are similar. Hair loss, scratching, and the scratching can be so severe that they actually cause secondary wounds with infections. In the case of sucking lice, severe infections can even cause anemia. Animals can be so itchy to the point that affects their behavior and their general welfare. They can lose weight or not gain weight as expected and miss their growth targets. Essentially, if there is a lice or mite problem on farm, it's worth treating. To treat lice and mite infections, there are two main types of products on the market. The first are the synthetic pyrethroids, and these can be a pour-on or a spot-on product. The second group of products are the clear drenchers, the ivermectin type products, and these can be a pour-on or an injectable type. They're commonly known to farmers for use as wormers in Ireland, but we are seeing problems with antelminthic resistance in gut worms. And so we need to use these products wisely as part of a parasite control plan. So what is the best way to use a pour-on product? Before starting, make sure you know what the withdrawal period is for the drug that you're using, especially in finishing animals. Then read the label. There are differences between how to use the product between brands. And thirdly, make sure that the dose is correct for the weight of the animal in front of you. Underdosing can lead to the drug being less effective. Check if you are using a spot on or a pour on product because they are designed to be used differently. A spot on needs a large concentration of drug, usually in one or more spots, often between the shoulders. Pour ons are designed to be poured along the top of the spine. Try not to get all the product in one side or in, all in the front and none left for the back end. If the animals are not being kept in housing, be aware that the rain can wash some of the product off and make it less effective. If the hair is particularly long or dirty, clipping along the top of the back can also help this process. In theory, this removes some of the long hair that's an ideal environment for the lice. Always wear gloves when handling these products for your own safety and make sure you dispose of the empty bottles and any leftover product in a safe way away from watercourses as these products can be extremely toxic to fish. So what if you treat the animals and the infection comes back? There could be a number of reasons for this. Firstly, none of these drugs work very well against the eggs of the parasites. And you might treat the animal, but then the eggs hatch and grow out and you have a reinfection after three to four weeks. Also, if there's a particularly heavy infection, you might need to retreat the animals. Lice and mites need direct contact between animals to spread. They complete their life cycle on the host and don't survive long outside in the environment. If you treat animals that are only showing the clinical signs, like the hair loss or the itching, they, the treatment could work, 
But then after, after the product wears off, they will become reinfected from the other untreated animals in the group. So treat the entire group. Another reason that the products might not be working as you expect them to is because you're using the wrong type of product for the specific parasites that you have in your animals. Injectables, for example, don't work well against biting lice, as these are only on the surface of the skin and they're not exposed to the product if they're injected. While if you part the hair, you can often see the lice, the only way to really know exactly which parasite you're dealing with is for your vet to come and take a skin scraping from the hairless areas. Have a look under the microscope and see exactly which parasite is causing the problem. You can then discuss with your vet what is the best treatment plan for your farm. The most of the grazing season we've spoken about on the vodcast, the importance of measuring grass and knowing what's going on on the platform at certain times of the year. We often call it farming blind when we don't measure grass or we don't know what's going on on the platform, we're not walking it regularly. And the same can be said when we don't know what silage quality is in our pit as we approach the winter housing period. Silage quality will have a, an effect on our winter feeding plan. It'll be dependent obviously on the body condition score of those cows and also where our replacement stock may be in regards to targets and finishing animals. But we have to plan accordingly in order to optimise performance. And how do we do that? We test silage and we know exactly what's in the pit so we can balance the diet accordingly. If we take for an example a finishing steer, and sometimes the economics of bee finishing systems can be questioned at times, but for an example, a, a typical bullock or steer finishing system on 75 DMD silage, typical feeding rates would be five kilos where that silage quality goes to 65 dmd silage the same steer would require seven and a half kilos of concentrates but if silage quality was to fall below 65 dmd that same steer to put on the same amount of weight would require ad lib concentrate supplementation if we take as a quick example body condition score cows that are on target are drying off so that three body condition score and planning them for the dry period ahead Silage quality will dictate what the plan will be for those cows who are going to have a target dry period of 60 days. Any silage that will be over 72 DMD will need to be diluted down in order to not make the cows too fat prior to calfing. Silage that is between 68 to 72 DMD can be fed ad libitum. But then likewise, similar to high, too high quality of silage, low quality silage, so silage that's below you know, 68 DMD, so 65 or less, that silage will have to be supplemented in order to maintain body condition score over the dry period. Likewise with replacement stock, target uh, dry matter digestibility with grass silage of 75 plus will need between half a kilo to a kilo of concentrate supplementation. However, where that silage quality may be as low as 65 DMD, those same replacement heifers will need between two and two and a half kilos of concentrate supplementation over the winter period in order to hit target weight gains. For more information on any of the topics covered in this week's Glanbia Ireland Dairy Focus Vodcast, contact your local Glanbia Ireland representative or log on to www.glanbiaconnect.com.